Caitlin with another holiday cocktail for you. So today we have an even more holiday themed beverage than the last time. This warm and frothy holiday drink is called the Tom and Jerry and some of you may be familiar with it as it has remained popular in the Midwest particularly in Minnesota and Wisconsin. The Tom and Jerry has a lot in common with that more popular Yuletide beverage eggnog but of course it has its own wonderful charms. So before we get into the details of making a Tom and Jerry, which as you can see, requires a little more work than most of our cocktails, let's get a bit of history. The Tom and Jerry actually goes back a pretty long way, 200 years in fact. Most cocktail historians attribute its creation to the British journalist, Pierce Egan, who lived in London in the late 18th and early 19th centuries. He was actually the country's most famous sportscaster at the time, if you can believe it. But during his time, the only sports to discuss involved horses and boxing. Even so, someone had to give a play-by-play. -play. Egan also wrote books and plays, and one of those was called Life in London, or, known by its full name, The Day and Night Scenes of Jerry Hawthorne Esquire and His Elegant Friend, Corinthian Tom, accompanied by Bob Logic, the Oxonian, in their rambles and sprees through the metropolis. This story was also turned into a stage play. It is believed that Egan came up with the drink as a means of promoting the book, which follows the adventures of two protagonists named Tom and Jerry. Life in London was published in 1821, meaning the drink came shortly after, and it quickly became popular. What's not to like? During the cold winter months, it tastes delicious, it warms you up, and it packs a pretty decent punch. It was common to make a big batch and serve it in a punch bowl, a popular practice when it came to 19th century gatherings. Because of the popularity of the drink, manufacturers from all over the world, including Japan and England, began to sell punch bowl sets emblazoned with the words Tom and Jerry on them. The earliest historical evidence of one of these sets comes from an article in the New York Times from 1864 which mentions a Tom and Jerry bowl being shattered during a fatal altercation in a bar. They came in various colors and styles, and they helped in keeping this holiday tradition alive, at least for a while. Damon Runyon, a New York author of several short stories, two of which served as inspiration for the Broadway musical Guys and Dolls, wrote a Christmas tale called Dancing Dan's Christmas, in which two New York City gentlemen sat in a bar and drank Tom and Jerry's all night on Christmas Eve. To give you a taste, here is a gem from that short story, originally featured in Esquire in December of 1947. But anybody will tell you that there is nothing that brings out the true holiday spirit like hot Tom and Jerry, and I hear that since Tom and Jerry goes out of style in the United States, the holiday spirit is never quite the same. He was right in that the drink did dwindle in popularity in the 20th century. There's no perfect explanation as to why, it just simply went out of fashion. But for some reason, it has remained a favorite in the cold states of the Midwest. In fact, Wisconsin produces and sells ready-made Tom and Jerry batter, and all you have to do is add the booze and the milk. It's a drink that's actually making a bit of a comeback in certain stylish drinking corners, as eventually, as we historians know well, everything old is new again, especially when it tastes this good. So to enjoy a Tom and Jerry, you have to make the Tom and Jerry batter. Now, like I said in the history part, you can buy pre-made batter and that makes this a lot easier, but I like to make things difficult. So we're gonna show you how to make the batter yourself. So I'm going to read off all the ingredients that you need. So you need a dozen eggs, and you have to separate them, which I've already done, because no one wants to see me do that. Um, egg whites and egg yolks separate, okay? You need a stick of butter, softened. You need cinnamon. You need nutmeg. You need cloves. You need cream of tartare. You need pure vanilla extract. 
you need one cup of sugar, and you need milk, which I haven't gotten out yet, but you do need some milk or water works too, but we'll get to that part later. And for the alcohol content, you need rum, dark rum, not light rum, and you can use brandy or cognac, whatever you have on hand. Okay, so I've separated the eggs, and now I'm going to take the bowl of egg whites. So I have 12 egg whites here, so you can see that without me spilling. Then you're going to take one tablespoon of the cream of tartar, add that to the egg whites. And then you are going to whip the eggs with a mixer until it's stiff. It looks like a meringue, kind of. If you've watched The Great British Baking Show, you're familiar with meringue. So here we go. Okay, so I have whipped the egg whites. You can see, maybe not as stiff as they should be, but it looks okay to me. Um, so the next thing you're going to do is take your bowl of egg yolks. You're going to add your softened butter to that bowl. And your one cup of sugar. And then you're gonna whip that until it's a liquid, okay? Here we go. Okay, so now we're going to fold the egg yolk mixture, which is a thick liquid, into the egg white mixture, which is more like a meringue. In case you're wondering, this makes a lot. As we talked about in the history, this is, a, this is designed for like a punch bowl at a party. So if you're just making this for a couple people, you can put it in the fridge and save it for, you know, however long an egg mixture lasts in the fridge. Okay, so now we're gonna add in our spices and it's a teaspoon of each. So we've got a teaspoon of cinnamon. That's first. A teaspoon of cloves. It's a little harder to find at the grocery store. There's the cloves. A teaspoon of nutmeg. And a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. Okay, and then we add some rum. So there isn't just rum in the drink, there's rum in the batter. So, uh -oh. <clears throat> two ounces in fact. So we'll do two ounces of rum. Okay, let's stir it up. Okay, so assembling the drink itself has another few complications. So the first thing you should do is actually preheat your mug if you want it really nice and warm. So the best way to do that is to just boil some water, pour it in the mug for a little bit, and then dump it out and you'll have a nice warm glass. So I'm gonna dump it. So then you're going to take your batter out of the fridge. You're gonna take a large tablespoon, kind of overflowing there, add it to the mug. And then you do one ounce each of brandy and rum. There's the brandy. Here comes the rum. Okay. 
Next thing you do, last thing you do, almost the last thing you do, is add your hot milk or, or your hot water. So obviously for hot water, you're just gonna boil some water. If you want hot milk, it's up to you how you heat it up. I just kind of heated some on the stove. You're supposed to have about four ounces, so I'm just gonna estimate until it looks about right. That looks okay. And then you're going to garnish it with some nutmeg, that lovely garnish. And cheers, you have a Tom and Jerry. So let me give you guys a warning about the Tom and Jerry. It's strong, so don't drink too much of it at one time. Just drink it slowly over the course of an evening. Don't drink too many uh, servings of it because you'll be on the floor if you do. But it's an interesting story, thought I'd share it with you. If any of you have memories of drinking Tom and Jerry's or remember those cups, which obviously I didn't have, um, let us know. And if you have any other holiday beverage traditions, you can let us know about that too. So cheers, happy holidays everyone. We'll see you soon.